let us now understand what simple random sampling means. The study of statistics involves two types of data sets. One is known as the population and the other is known as the sample. The population is a collection of individuals, people, households, items or even events about which we wish to draw certain inferences. It is not always convenient or possible to examine each and every member of the entire population. A sample therefore is required to be drawn from this population. A sample is a subset of people's items, people items, uh, events and so on which are drawn from the population. To represent the population well, it is important that the sample should be randomly collected and it should be adequately large enough to represent the population. If the sample is random and large enough, then the information can be used from the sample to make inferences about the population. A simple random sample is a subset of individuals drawn from the larger set which is the population. Each individual is chosen entirely by chance and has the same probability of being selected from the population. Also, a random sample has two conditions. As we just said, the first condition is that each individual has the chance of being selected within a sample. The second condition is, which is very often ignored, that each sample should have a equal chance of being selected. For getting a certain sample size from the population, there could be various combinations. Therefore, we have a large number of samples. So, a random sample is one in which each individual has an equal chance of being included in the drawn sample and each sample has an equal chance of being drawn from the population. Therefore, if we consider the random sampling method, then it is a procedure for selecting a sample which is unbiased from the population. A simple random sample refers to a sampling method that has what are these properties. The population consists of capital N objects. The sample consists of small n objects. All possible samples of small n objects are equally likely to be selected. Now, under these circumstances, there are many ways in which we could obtain a simple random sample. One way could be by using the lottery method. Each of the n population members are assigned a unique number. The numbers are placed in a bowl and thoroughly mixed. Then a blindfolded researcher selects small n numbers from the population from amongst these slips which are there in the bowl. The population members having the selected numbers are included in the sample. Such samples were either drawn from a finite population with replacement or from an infinite population with or without a replacement. When a population element can be selected more than one time, then we call it sampling with replacement. But when a population element can be selected only once, then it is called sampling without replacement. Simple random samples are of interest 
in this module since sampling distributions as we have already discussed and we shall be discussing further below are relatively easy to derive from this type of sampling method. Inferential statistics uses sample statistics in order to make inferences or to draw conclusions about the population parameters of interest. For instance, the population mean and the population standard deviation are examples of the population parameters. Deriving a sample, sampling distribution uh, about the sample statistic is thus of great value. What is a sample statistic? Sample statistic is that measure which is obtained uh, from the sample. Whereas the same measure, let us say mean, if it is obtained from the population, then it is called a parameter. The field of inferential statistics enables the researcher to make educated guesses about certain underlying values. Uh, the characteristics that belong to the larger group which is the population could be estimated through these inferential statistics. The logic of sampling gives you the way to test the conclusions about the underlying group or the population with the help of a smaller proportion, a smaller portion which is drawn from the population. For example, researchers want to know about things uh, in relation to the population but do not have data for the entire individuals or the items which are a part of the population. If a company wants to know about its uh, service division and wants to learn whether its customers were satisfied or not, it would not be practical to find out uh, directly from each and every individual who has purchased the product. Instead, the company might select a sample from the population and use some method for deriving the necessary information from this sample. Hence, sampling methods can give us the desired results and thus is an important tool in statistical analysis. In the next two sections, we shall learn more about sampling statistics and the probability distribution of such sample statistics. What is it that we will be studying in this module? We would know about the basic properties of the sampling distribution. We would also know and derive a sampling distribution out of a sample statistic. So now we come to the question of what a sample statistic is. A statistic is a value calculated from any function of the sample observations which are random variables following a random uh, sampling distribution and it represents the characteristics of the sample of the population and when it is measured from the sample then they, it is known as statistic. The sample variance and the sample proportion and sample mean these are all examples of sample statistics. The sample observations vary from sample to sample that is if I draw one sample then I would get one particular value of mean. Now if I draw another sample from the same population and of the same size as well then the individuals which have been selected in that sample would be different and so I would arrive at a sample statistic or a sample mean which is different from the former with that which is drawn from the former sample and so on. This way for each sample that we draw we would have one measure 
of the value of some sample statistic it could be the mean so the distribution of such means which are drawn from different samples from the same population is known as the sampling distribution of means in other words the parameters are the characteristics of the population whereas the statistic are the property is the property or a measure of the samples so as we have said the value of the sample statistic varies from one sample to the other therefore there is some kind of uncertainty about the value obtained regarding the sample statistic as we have said like the mean therefore the values which are obtained from different samples follow a random distribution so they those values themselves the set of the sample statistics like sample means themselves follow a random distribution as a practice in the following exercise in the following model module we will be following a notation that is that the upper case letters signify the population and its various measures and the lower case letters they signify the sample statistics therefore for example six different samples have 10 elements that are collected in each sample the sample statistic x bar that is the sample mean is used to denote the sample mean which is obtained from the sample and it is calculated as while small x denotes the six calculated values of the sample mean it varies for each of the six samples and none of them are identical to the population mean for some it can could be the variation could be very large and for some the variation could be small as compared to the population mean since the statistic as we said is a random variable it has a probability distribution we can attach some amount of probability for obtaining a particular value of the sample statistic this way the probability distribution of a sampling sample statistic is called the sampling distribution for instance if we obtain many means from different samples then the different varying values of means from each sample would occur with a certain probability and therefore this such a distribution of means would be known as the sampling distribution of means so now let us continue about the sampling distribution the sampling distribution is a way to get from our sample statistics that uh, relate to the population parameter in order to understand it you would have to be able to and willing to undertake a kind of a experiment imagine that uh, instead of just taking three a single sample like we normally do in a study if you were to take three independent samples from the same population and furthermore imagine that for each of your three samples you collected a single response and computed a single statistic that means the say the mean of these responses even if though all three samples came from the same population you won't expect to get the exact same responses and the exact same value of the sample statistic that is the sample mean they would differ slightly just due to the randomness or the luck of the draw or the natural fluctuations or vagaries of drawing a sample but you would expect that all the three samples would yield a similar statistical estimate because they were drawn from the same population that is the underlying population is considered to be homogeneous now for the uh, leap of imagination imagine that you would you did an infinite number of samples from the same population and computed 
the average for each one and then you plotted them on a histogram on the same central value and that you get fewer and fewer samples that have averages that are farther away or uh, from the central value which could be the mean in other words the bar graph the histogram as described would approach a bell shaped curve which is, as we know is a normal distribution what are we saying in other words we are saying as the number of samples obtained from a population approach infinity as the number of samples go on increasing and even if they are of the same sample size the sample in the study would give rise to a sampling distribution which would ultimately become a normal distribution as described the sampling distribution is defined in terms of the probability distribution of the sample statistic we have already said this but it is to remind ourselves here we use the rules of probability to derive the sampling distribution this method is used when the sample statistic is a simple function of the sample observations or when the population size is relatively small here we deal only with two kinds of sample statistics namely the sample mean and the sample variance that is x bar and s squared that is the sample uh, variance we are now considering the sampling distribution of the sample mean if x1 x2 xn capital x1 x2 xn constitutes a random sample then the sample mean x bar would be equal to sigma of capital xi upon n where 1 to uh, n is the you know the observations number of observations or the number of individuals in the sample the sample variance s squared would be equal to sigma of xi minus x bar whole squared upon n minus 1 we treat, take it as n minus 1 because this is a sample variance and we don't divide by n but we divide by n minus 1 further let us discuss the case of a normal distribution the following proposition holds true for a random sample of size n small n having elements x1 x2 up to xn taken from the population which has a normal distribution with a mean mu and a standard deviation sigma a normal distribution is a function that represents the distribution of many random variables as a symmetric bell shaped graph the sample mean x bar which we have already stated is x i sigma x i upon n is also normally distributed with a mean mu and standard deviation of sigma upon under root n so the sample total is t subscript o is equal to x1 plus x2 plus x3 up to xn and it is normally distributed with a mean n mu and a standard deviation under root n sigma this implies that using the above proposition we can obtain probabilities such as <coughs> p in the range of a to b for the measured statistic that is x bar using the z table after standardization we would be able to find, find out the probabilities for this interval between a and b for x bar now we consider the central limit theorem for a random sample of the size n small n having elements x1 x2 up to xn taken from any population the population distribution would have a mean mu and a standard deviation sigma and the following would hold good would hold would be true for a sufficiently large n for a sufficiently large sample the sample mean x bar and the sample total to has approximately 
the same normal distribution and with a mean mu and the standard deviation is equal to sigma upon under root n and the mean would be n mu and the standard deviation would be under root n sigma respectively. In other words, the theorem which is a key result from probability theory implies that the sum of the independent random variables when standardized by its standard deviation has a distribution that tends to become a standard normal distribution as the sample size grows. How large would a sample size uh, follow the central limit theorem? The answer depends upon two factors. The requirements for accuracy is one factor. The more closely the sampling distribution needs to resemble a sampling distribution, the more sample points would be required. The shape of the underlying population, this is the second factor. The more closely the original population resembles a normal distribution, the fewer would be the sampling points required. In practice, most statisticians say that the sample size of 30 and beyond is large enough when the population distribution is normally distributed. Now let us look at different sampling distributions of the mean. Suppose the sample size n is equal to 10, then you would notice in the figure that the distribution is quite peaked and if the sample distributions, if the sample size is 4, it becomes flatter in comparison to the population distribution which underlies it. The normal distribution has is a probability distribution that is associated with a non normal random variable x with a cumulative probability and the graph of the normal distribution depends upon two factors the mean and standard deviation. The mean of the distribution determines the location of the center of the distribution and the standard deviation determines the height of the graph. When the standard deviation is large, the curve is short and wide. When the standard deviation is small, then the curve is tall and narrow. All the distributions look like symmetric bell-shaped curves as we have seen in the diagram. Now let us consider the case of the central limit theorem. Stop. The distribution of mean for a relatively large n which approximates the normal curve you would see is peaked and then we could have a small or moderate n which becomes flatter and then finally we have the population distribution which is quite flat. The central limit theorem states that the distribution of the sum or average of a large number of independent identically distributed variables will be approximately normal regardless of the underlying distribution which is clear from the diagram above. The, as the sample size goes on increasing, the distribution tends to be more and more normal. Now let us summarize what we have learnt in this module. Inferential statistics makes use of sample statistics in order to draw conclusions about the population parameter. A sample statistic is a function of sample data and is a random variable due to the uncertainty involved in obtaining the value of the sample statistic through the collection of data. The sampling distribution of a sample statistic like the sample mean lists all the possible sample statistics like it could be the sampling distribution of mean or variance or median and the probability of getting those sample statistics. A simple random sample with replacement 
is used for deriving a sampling distribution of the sample statistic. The probability rules are used for, to obtain the sampling statistic in the case of the population which has different x size. And finally, we have seen the central limit theorem which says that as the sample size grows, then the distrib sampling distribution tends to become more and more like a normal distribution.